six common mistakes selling digital products online and how to avoid them. Today you will discover how to avoid these six common mistakes when you are creating your digital products and make sure that you definitely get sales. There are six very common mistakes that most people make when they are trying to create digital products for sale online. Even making just one of these mistakes can completely prevent you from making any sales at all. So you want to make sure that you're not doing any of these things. And what I'm going to share with you today is going to save you so much time. It's going to save you from wasting so much effort, from wasting your money and save you so much stress if you focus on creating the right product at the right time. And a lot of people say that you won't end up creating the right product to start with and you have to practice before you get success. But I didn't have that experience myself. My very first product that I launched went on to make me multiple six figures and is still my most popular product to date. And I took some time to plan out my first product before I created it, which really helped me to get the product right first time. And since then, I have to admit that I haven't always followed my own advice and I haven't always created products. And I've got to admit that since then, I haven't always followed my own advice and I have ended up creating products that nobody wanted to buy because I ended up making some of these mistakes myself, which is really down to just not planning them properly. So I'm sharing this from experience to help you avoid some of the struggles I had when I thought that I could just create whatever I wanted and just sell it to my existing audience, but it simply wasn't true. The fundamentals of this lesson remains true at all times. So here are the six common mistakes selling digital products online and I am going to walk you through each one in turn. So I'm just going to go over them very briefly and then I'll go into detail with them after that. So mistake number one is creating a signature course as your first product. Mistake number two is pre-selling a large product without an audience. Mistake number three is writing an ebook as your first product. Mistake number four is creating a product that nobody wants to buy. Mistake number five is taking longer than three hours to create your first product. And mistake number six is not considering different types of digital products before launching in and creating a digital product. So let's look at mistake number one, which is creating a signature course as your first product. Creating an online course is a very common type of digital product. Wherever you turn, there are people telling you how to create courses and talking about the benefits of creating a course. And there's good reason for this. The global online education market is worth over $250 billion and is rising steeply. And the global pandemic only accelerated this trend because there are so many more people wanting to learn from the comfort of their own homes now. And online courses are the obvious choice when deciding what products to create for your online business. And a lot of people start by creating a large signature course. So a signature course offers a complete solution and can sell anywhere from like $1,000 to $2,000 because it's very valuable. It offers a big transformation for people. However, as much as I love signature courses, I don't recommend that you start by creating a signature course as your very first digital product for several reasons. Number one, you are new to your business and inexperienced in selling and starting with a high ticket price item is going to be the hardest thing that you can do. Number two, people are not going to trust you enough to buy your high ticket course because they haven't had time to get to know you and trust you yet using your free content or lower priced offerings. 
And number three, it takes a very long time to create a signature course and you don't yet know if it's going to be popular. So it's very likely that all your efforts are going to go to waste and I don't want that to happen. So what should new business owners do instead? What I recommend doing is if you have a desire to create a course and you love to teach, that you create a mini course which can be created in less than three hours. And because you end up pricing it so much lower, it is a lot easier to sell. Mistake number two, pre-selling a large product without an audience. Now, I think most people agree that creating a large time consuming signature course is not a good idea without first testing your idea to see if it's going to be popular. And something that I hear experts raving about all the time is the notion of pre-selling your course before you create it. Now, pre-selling involves putting up a sales page for an idea for a product and asking people to buy it before you've actually created it just to test the market and see if your idea is something that somebody wants to buy before you invest your time creating the course. And pre-selling sounds great in theory because who doesn't want to get paid before they actually do the work? But pre-selling can actually work very well but only if you already have a large audience or if you don't mind losing what could be a lot of money in paid advertising to test the concept. And the problem is that a lot of new business owners are buying into this concept and finding that pre-selling just isn't working for them because they don't have a large enough audience and they don't have a budget for testing paid ads either. So that's why I don't recommend starting off your business by creating a signature course as your first product. So what's the solution? I recommend creating a lower priced digital product as your first offer. And if you spend three hours or less finishing it, there is actually no need to pre-sell it because you've invested a very small amount of time in it. And people are going to be much more likely to buy a product that's actually finished and is a much lower price point. Mistake number three, writing an ebook as your first product. Now, when I first started my very first business, which was a long time ago, selling ebooks was the norm. And it's something that seems to have continued to be popular, even though it's not a good idea right now. So in those days, which was over 10 years ago, it was practically the only digital product that people ever created. Selling online courses just wasn't something that people ever did. And I was a blogger at that time. I called myself a blogger and I was in a group with a lot of other bloggers and we all had um, high amounts of traffic, quite a large audience. And what we all did was we all took our businesses seriously. We offered things for sale and we all created PDFs as our only types of products that we sold because that's what people did in those days. Nobody really ever um, created anything else. It wasn't really a done thing to to create video courses or anything like that. And a lot of my friends had large audiences, but yet they hardly sold any of their eBooks. Whereas I had a much smaller audience than a lot of my friends and my PDFs were selling like hotcakes. And you could say that I too had created an eBook, but my book, wasn't technically a book and that's why it sold a lot better. My book was actually a detox, which is a collection of recipes. So it wasn't something that somebody read. It was an action that somebody took and it gave them fast results. And I focused on the results that people get. And I'll explain a bit more about what type of product will get you results in a minute. And that was a very subtle, but yet a very important difference between the types of PDF documents that you create for sale. And the problem with eBooks is that if you write a large eBook chock full of information, most people just don't want to sit and read a long PDF full of text on their computer screens. They'd much rather buy a proper book, either a paperback book or a Kindle book on Amazon. 
Another problem with trying to sell ebooks is that you can pick up Kindle books very cheaply on Amazon now, solving a whole range of different problems. So if you offer a book for sale on your website for say $20 or more, people are going to think that that's too expensive. Back in the day, people could sell more ebooks because Amazon hadn't really taken off and you couldn't really buy Kindle books. So people would just read ebooks from websites in those days. But even then, ebooks weren't all that popular compared to other types of products. And a book takes a really long time to write and it's not popular to buy. So my recommendation to you is skip the book writing if it's your first product and focus on something that sells at a much higher price point that is much faster to create, such as an e-course. Mistake number four, creating a product that nobody wants to buy. The sad thing is that most digital courses end up making no sales whatsoever simply because no one wants to buy them. But had that business owner just taken a little while to plan something that people actually wanted to buy, they would have had a dramatically different outcome, potentially life-changing like my own results were. Based on the back of one successful product that I created, I was able to move into a house double the size, buy a new car, take my kids on foreign holidays and send them both to a full-time private outdoor forest nursery, buy them new clothes, hire a housekeeper and so much more. And we never had any of that before I started my business. We were really, really tight with money. We couldn't even afford to travel abroad. I was buying secondhand clothing for my kids. We were really, really struggling for money before I started my business. And it had a life changing impact on my family's life. And I'm so grateful for that. And that's why I want to share what I know to help you get the same outcome that I got and help you avoid mistakes that are going to slow down your progress. And the main problem is that most people create a digital product based on sharing knowledge with people rather than solving problems. So say for example, you have an idea for a product which is to teach people how to create homemade beauty products because you are really good at that and you want to help people to share in your passion. But the problem is that nobody is going to buy this product because they don't want it. And you might be thinking, well, Obviously there's people out there who want to create their own homemade beauty products. So of course there's people out there who want it. But what do people actually want? Let's look a little bit deeper. There's three main broad categories of things that people want in life. People want to get healthier, they want to get wealthier, or they want to get happier. And most products need to fit into one of these three broad categories. So your job is always to remember that the real reason why you're helping people is to solve one of these three problems to improve their health, wealth or happiness. So do homemade products help people to get healthier? Yes, they do. So you need to create a product that helps people to, for example, detox their bodies and clear up their skin with homemade beauty products. So the problem is that people have is that they might have blemished skin or they might be struggling with their health. They've got health problems and they really want to detox their body as the solution to the health problems. So you are still focusing on the same broad topic, which is the homemade beauty products, but you have to frame it in such a way that you are solving people's problems. And the difference between what people want and the solution to the problem, which is actually what they need, might seem very subtle, but it makes all of the difference between a product that sells and a product that doesn't sell. And I remember creating an ebook on raw food recipes for parties, and I only sold a few copies. I assumed that because I had the experience doing something that was a big project for me and something that was fun and I was very proud of it, that this would be a a popular product to buy. But little did I know that it wasn't a product that anyone actually wanted because I didn't frame it in such a way of solving any problems. And really, it, there might have been nobody who would have actually wanted it even if I had 
reframed it in such a way that would have solved a problem because people tend to go on raw food diets for health reasons, maybe because they're sick and they're not feeling very well, they want more energy and that type of thing. So there's very few people actually on a raw food diet in the first place. And then I had niched down even more and decided to focus on parties with raw food meal plans. And it was just niched down too far because I couldn't really relate it back to the original problem, which was the health problem. The reason why people had gone on the diet in the first place was either to lose weight or get healthy. And having a party, it doesn't really solve those problems. So that wasn't something that was ever going to be related to the original problem that people had, which was a health problem. Mistake number five, taking longer than three hours to create your first product. A very common mistake that I see a lot of business owners making, and I myself have made this mistake in numerous different niches more times than I care to admit, is to take longer than three hours to create your first product. And I remember when I started a new business in the fruit niche, building out a massive online store filled with lots of different fruit gadgets and recipe books, etc. And I sent a lot of traffic to my store. I paid for advertising for people to come over to my store and see if I could drum up any sales. And the sad thing was that nobody bought a single thing. And that was a very hard lesson for me to learn. And I hope to be able to help you to avoid making the same mistake. And I just didn't take any of the lessons that I had learned in my first business where I sat down and I looked at what people wanted and I looked at solving problems and I planned it out and I really thought about it. And I really just took a passion of mine just because at the time I was on a raw food, fruit based diet. And I just assumed that because I was passionate about fruit that I could just sell any old random fruit stuff and it would sell and I wasn't actually solving problems and that was the the issue with these products that I was selling. And as a new business owner, your only job is to find one product that is going to take off and sell for a profit because when you find that one product that takes that takes off, you can scale it indefinitely. But that means that you can't get attached to any particular product concept and you might have to create and you probably will have to create more than one small product to see which is going to be the winner. And if you spend longer than three hours creating a product, you might be totally wasting your time because you haven't proven your product can sell. And three hours is long enough to create a product that can truly solve small problems to see if people are willing to pay for them. But if nobody buys, you haven't wasted too much time. And you haven't really wasted that product either because you can always repurpose that product at a later date as long as you stay in the same niche. But then you need to go on straight away to the next product without getting emotional about your products that don't sell well and try and take a new product from a different angle and see if that one's going to sell better. Mistake number four is not considering different types of digital products. Another mistake that I see people making when they create digital products is not considering the vast range of different digital products out there. There are so many different digital products that you could possibly create. And most people have no idea that all of these different types exist. And just a few, just to name a few, there are digital products such as mini courses, audio courses, detoxes, recipe books, printables, guides, and workbooks, just to name a very small few. And you need to consider all of them before deciding which products to create first. And I have created 10 different categories of digital products that are perfect for offering as your first product. And I share all 10 different types of products and explain whether each one will be suitable for you and whether each one will be suitable for your audience in my 100k product creation masterclass. And in this masterclass, I also share the ideal price that you should charge for each product, how to create each product, how long each product will take to create, and the free tools you can use to create each product. 
and my 100k product creation masterclass is worth $77 and is part of my dream business product program but I am giving you free access to watch it for a limited time. So to get access to that right now you can go to kathkyle.com forward slash product and you will be able to watch the masterclass immediately and I would love to know what you think about it because I know I am sharing so much value in this masterclass. This is not all fluff. It is not me talking about myself for half an hour. It is pure content that's going to help you to get your product created. So go and watch that now. And now it's your turn to go and put your stamp on the world.